All right. Hey, Cubs. We're going to start our reading today of Harry Potter. We're getting closer and closer to the end. As you know, let's pause here and let's think about what happened in our last reading. So if you said that that Harry and Ron and Hermione realized that Hagrid told somebody how to get past Fluffy, and now they know, too, that Dumbledore has been called away from the school, so they feel like Snape is going to, at any moment, go try to get the Sorcerer's Stone. So Harry has decided, no matter what, he's going to go try to get there first, because, well, you know, why not? For Harry, there's nothing to lose, because he's worried that he Voldemort will go try to get him if he if he comes back so he has nothing to lose and Ron and Hermione being good friends they're not going to let him do that on the on their own right and so we are going to start in just a moment I want to think talk to you about your predictions as Cubs Jaylee said that she thinks that Snape is going to trap them and take them out of the school I thought that that was a pretty good prediction Trinity says they're going to get caught again you know what they do get caught a lot so that was probably a very based on what we've already read in this book that was a great <laughs> prediction too so Ron says they're going to go through a trap door which is you know that's that's a good point it is called uh, that's the title of the chapter um Caden says that they are going to go into a trap. They're going into a trap, and they're going to have to like go through an escape room to get out. Um, so maybe the whole thing is a trap, like Snape's trying to trap them. And that's kind of what Diley said, too. Um, so, And, of course, Louisa told us that her favorite part in that chat, the, uh, yesterday's reading was when they heard she, we heard about the door, where they were talking about the door. So we are going to start. Oops, wrong page. We are going to start here. And then we're going to keep going and see what happens when we go through the trapdoor, which is the name of our, our chapter. And I think that we're going to get some really interesting things that happen in this chapter. We are probably going to have to stop before we get to the end of the chapter today. But maybe by tomorrow we'll finish this chapter and get to our final chapter. All right, here we go. After dinner, the three of them sat nervously apart in the common room. Nobody bothered them. None of the Gryffindors had anything to say to Harry anymore, after all. This was the first night they ha he hadn't been upset by it. Hermione was skimming through all of her notes, hoping to come across one of the, the enchantments they were, going, they were about to try and break. Harry and Ron didn't talk, didn't talk much. Both of them were thinking about what to do. What the, both of them were thinking about what they were about to do. Slowly, the room emptied as people drifted off to bed. Better get the cloak, Ron muttered as Lee Jordan finally left, stretching and yawning. Harry ran upstairs to their dark dormitory. He put out the, pulled out the cloak, and then his, gr his eyes fell on the flute Hagrid had given him for Christmas. He pocketed it to use on Fluffy. He didn't feel much like, he didn't feel much like singing. He ran back down to the common room. We better put on the cloak here and make sure it covers all three of us. It fills spots one of us wandering our feet, wandering around on its own. What are you all doing? said a voice from the corner of the room. Neville appeared from behind an armchair, clutching Trevor the Toad, who looked as though he'd been making another bid for pre freedom. N nothing, Neville, nothing, said Harry, hurriedly putting the cloak behind his back. Neville saw the stared at their guilty faces. You're not going to go out again, he said. No, 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 said Hermione. No, we're not. Why don't you go to bed, Neville? Harry looked at the grandfather clock by the door. They couldn't afford to waste any more time. Snape might even now be playing Fluffy to sleep. You can't go out, said Neville. You'll be caught again. Gryffindor will be even in even more trouble. You don't understand, said Harry. This, n this is important. But Neville was clearly stealing himself to do something desperate. So I want us to look at the word stealing in this. It's, it's not S-T-A-L, which is like to take something. It's S-T-E-E-L, which is like that hard metal. So what do we think um, stealing means in this situation? What does that mean? So we're going to read the next line to see if we can figure out what stealing himself to do something desperate means. I won't let you do it, he said, hurrying to stand in front of the portrait hole. I'll, I'll fight you. 
So, when he's stealing himself to do something desperate, it seems like right here, down here, we know Neville is not the bravest guy, but down here he's standing up to them, which is pretty brave. So we can guess that stealing probably means he's making himself braver, right? Trying to make himself brave. Like, Neville! Ron exploded. Get away from that hole! Don't be an idiot! You don't call... Don't you call me an idiot! Said Neville. I don't think you should be breaking any more rules. And you were the ones who told me to stand up to people. Yes, but not us, said Ron in exasperation. Neville, you don't know what you're doing. He took a step forward and Neville dropped Trevor the Toad, who leapt out of sight. Go on then, try and hit me, said Neville, raising his fist. I'm ready. Harry turned to Hermione. Do something he said desperately. Hermione stepped forward. Neville, she said, I'm really, really sorry about this. She raised her wand. Perfectus totalis, she cried, pointing it at Neville. Neville's arm snapped to his side. His legs sprang together, his whole body rigid. He swayed where he stood and then fell fat on his, flat on his face, stiff as a board. So this Perfectus totalis must make you like a stiff board, right? So you can't move. Hermione ran to turn him over. Neville's jaws were jammed together so he couldn't speak. Only his eyes were moving, looking at them in horror. What have you done to him? Harry whispered. It's a full body bind, said Hermione miserably. Oh, Neville, I'm so sorry. We had to, Neville. There's no time to explain, said Harry. You'll understand later, Neville, said Ron as they stepped over him and pulled on the invisibility cloak. But leaving Neville lying motionless on the floor didn't feel like a very good omen. In their nervous state, every statue's shadow looked like filch. Every distant breath of the wind sounded like peas swooping down on them. At the foot of the first set of stairs, they spotted Mrs. Nora skulking near the top. Oh, let's just kick her just this once. Ron whispered in Harry's ear, but Harry shook his head. As they climbed carefully around her, Mrs. Norris turned her lamp-like eyes on them, but didn't do anything. They didn't meet anyone else until they reached the staircase up to the third floor. Peeves was bobbing halfway up, loosening the carpet so the people would trip. Who's that? he said suddenly as they climbed towards him. He narrowed his wicked black eyes. No, you're there, even if I can't see you. Are you a ghoulie or a ghostie or a wee student beastie? He rose up in the air and floated there, squinting at them. Should call Filch, I should, if some things are creeping around unseen. Harry had a sudden idea. Peeves, he said in a hoarse whisper. The bloody baron has his own reasons for being invisible. Pease almost fell out of the air in shock. He caught himself in time and hovered about a foot off the stairs. So sorry, your bloodiness, Mr. Baron, sir, he said greasily. My mistake, my mistake. I didn't see you. Of course I didn't. You're invisible. Forgive old Peavesy his little joke, sir. I have business here, Pease, croaked Harry. Stay away from this place tonight. I will, sir. Most cert I most certainly will, said Peeves, rising in the air again. Hope your business goes well, Baron. I will not bother you. And he scooted off. Brilliant, Harry, whispered Ron. A few seconds later, they were there, outside the third floor corridor, and the door was, a door was already ajar. Well, there you are said Harry quietly. Snape's already got past Fluffy. Seeing the open door somehow seemed to impress upon all three of them what was facing them. Underneath the cloak, Harry turned to the other two. If you want to go back, I won't blame you. Ooh, there's a picture. Yee! And look what it's a picture of. Fluffy. So I'm going to let you look at that while I read this page. He said, You can take the cloak. I won't need it now. Don't be stupid, said Ron. We're coming, said Hermione. Harry pushed the door open. As the door creaked, low, rumbling growls met their ears. 
All three of the dogs' noses sniffed madly in their direction, even though they couldn't see them. What's that at its feet? Hermione whispered. It looks like a hop, said Ron. Snake must have left it there. You must wake up the moment you stop playing, said Harry. Well, here it goes. He put Hagrid's flute to his lips and blew. It wasn't really a tune, but from the first note, the bee's eyes began to, beast's eyes began to droop. Harry hardly drew a breath. Slowly, the dog's growls ceased. It tottered on its paws and fell to its knees and then slumped to the ground, fast asleep. Keep playing, Ron warned Harry as they slipped out of the cloak and crept towards the trap door. They could feel the dog's hot, smelly breath as they approached the giant heads. I think we'll be able to pull the door open, said Ron, peering over the dog's back. Want to go first, Hermione? No, I don't. All right, said Ron. Ron gritted his teeth and stepped carefully over the dog's legs. He bent and pulled the ring of the trap door, which swung open. What can you see? Hermione asked, said anxiously. Nothing. Just black. There's no way of climbing down. We'll just have to drop. Harry, who was still playing the flute, waved at Ron to get his attention and pointed at himself. You want to go first? Are you sure? said Ron. I don't know how deep this thing goes. Give the flute to Hermione so she can keep him asleep. Harry handed the flute over. In the few seconds of silence, the dog growled and twitched, but the moment Hermione began to play, it fell back into its deep sleep. Harry climbed over it and looked down through the trap door. There was no sign of the bottom. He lowered himself through the hole until he was hanging on by his fingertips. Then he looked up at Ron and said, If anything happens to me, don't follow. Go straight to the owlery and send Hedvig to Dumbledore. All right. All right, said right, said Ron. See you in a minute, I hope. As Harry let go, cold, damp air rushed past him as he fell down, 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 and thwomp. With a funny, muffled sort of thump, he landed on something soft. He sat up and felt around, his eyes not used to the gloom. It felt as though he was sitting on some sort of plant. It's okay, he called up to the light. He called up to the light the size of a postage stamp, which was the, uh, uh, which was the open trap door. It's a soft landing. You can jump. And we're going to stop there. So as we know, Ron, I mean Ron, Harry has just jumped in. Ron and Hermione are probably going to follow them. What do you think, what do you predict is going to happen after they fall onto this soft landing? What is going to happen? All right. Let me know in the comments.